Hello, this is day one of my 30 day review for the Kershaw Natrix in copper. The Kershaw Natrix is based on the ZT0770, which is uh, based off the ZT0777. So that means absolutely nothing to me as I am neither a Kershaw nor a ZT fan. But I picked this knife up because it is very pretty. The scale material is a solid copper natural material. And on the reverse, it is a steel sub frame lock with a steel deep carry clip. Uh, that's ugly. So on the back spacer, it looks like it's just a injection molded affair, which is fine. I'm hoping that I'm going to do a tear down, hopefully around the three minute mark and uh, see if we can get rid of that guy. And the centering's, centering's on and action. So it's a manual flipper, nice and smooth. Uh, good lockup, and it's a modified sheep's foot blade in D2 steel. So the first thing I want to do is uh, very slowly open the knife, find the lockup, and then just give it a wrap. So it's locks good, and then if I do a very vigorous open, uh, it's not hyperextending and overlocking and there's no lock stick. So shouldn't be, it's steel on steel, not titanium, but just checking. Uh, so that's the first little bit. And the next thing is going to be uh, just checking the pocket. Oh, so pants, knife and pocket. It's a very subtle, uh, discreet knife. And then the retention is pretty good. And then if I do a more vigorous shake, it comes out. So. You're not in danger of that following out with a uh, sane bipedal motion. If you're doing a bunch of flips, no guarantees might come out. So that's the knife, and now let's start the disassembly. To take this guy down, you're going to need three drivers. Uh, you need two T6 drivers and uh, one T8. So the reason why you need two T6 is I'm pretty sure these guys aren't keyed, uh, and you're going to need to hold one side and drive the, uh, the opposite. So. Get that guy. So the other thing about the uh, natural brass material is um, the reason why people tend to like it is it will wear. And if you like your tools to show wear, um, it looks like the uh, these screws have a little bit of Loctite on them. So if you like the tools to show a little bit of wear, patina, things like that, uh, the copper will show that. Yeah, so these guys had a Loctite on them. And then the uh, frame screw just has a little bit of copper rubbings. There's no Loctite on that guy. Take out the other screw. Okay. Good, all right. So that's out. Then I switch over to our T8. Take out the pivot. And she's done. Five screws. Uh, only the uh, pocket clip was Loctite. The rest is uh, see just some copper rubbings on there, so that's fine. So take off the scale now. Don't want anything to explode on me. Yeah, okay. So it's quite nice. Um, milled out. You can still see the little milling marks. And then what I was looking for was the. Uh, steel washer since copper is quite a bit softer than steel if that was the steel bearing riding on the copper you'd wear a channel and have degraded performance over time which we don't have so the next thing we're going to look at is uh these are the kershaw puts it on the website pretty proudly the kershaw kvt bearings that means absolutely nothing to me but the knife does run pretty well so far just with the few first flicks uh, the blade itself, it looks like there is no no detent ramp, but there is a very deep pocket. So that's good. And this is what I'm checking for. Alright, so there's your little injection molded backspacer. And uh, I'm going to try reassembling this knife without it to see if it improves. And there is the opposite side. So this is how the uh, subframe lock is just a piece of steel screwed into the uh, more exotic uh, handle material and the screws do go all the way through so 
to hold the frame pin. And yeah, so it just goes all the way through and those screws aren't recessed, they're just proud. So then it also looks like the stop pin is uh, just a friction fit. So that's that. And oh, that's interesting. So the uh, if you're a right hand user, the uh, pocket clip screws are going to go into the threading is on the uh, the bar here. Whereas on the copper scale, the copper scale is pure copper. So it's just the threading is in the copper. So if you're a lefty and you're installing the pocket clip, be very careful about not over tightening that guy so you don't strip her out. Uh, just make sure you use some Loctite or something to get a better bond. And uh, now I'll go back to putting the knife together. So yeah, this guy, if he pops out, just put her back in. Nice and easy. Uh, put the blade back on. Looks like there's plenty of clearance, so it's not going to bottom out. Bearing down. Put the sandwich back together. Easy peasy. So I'm going to use the, uh, where is it, ST8, T6. So I'm just going to use my uh, finger to hold the screw to stop it from spinning. Uh, back up, find where the thread starts, and then just start the screw, not setting it fully yet. So this guy, same thing. Okay, with all that stuff started, I'm going to, uh, before I put the right hand pocket clip on, it's going to put the frame back together since I won't have access to the rear screw. Sorry, it's a bit of a weird angle to do from. I'm just doing this hand tight. I uh, don't want to, don't want to over tighten these guys. Just going by feel for where the factory had it set. And the uh, Pocket clip. No wobble, just a little bit tighter on that one. So no wobble, and now we're going to start putting the blade centering back on. So with the pivot loose, it's going to be all the way to the side. Uh, just take your T8 and then uh, just turn her till she starts moving and gets about where you want it to be. That looks like center. Flips good. Got it on the first try, it looks like. And the blade looks quite a bit more handsome without that backspacer in there. So I do like the open color construction. The danger of that is that your change is going to get in there and uh, ding up your blade. So before we get into anything else, I just want to get a scrap of paper and let's check how the factory did. All right, let's. So it looks like the tip has a little bit of an edge, but um, this knife is. Let's try and give it a. Yeah, if I'm helping it, like even a dull knife will cut, but uh, this knife is fairly blunted from the factory. Uh, let's get a piece of cardboard. So cutting with it. That's just me forcing it through. It's not actually cutting. And then going across. Okay, it's not biting. And anything, like even a butter knife should be able to cut. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Uh, so yeah, this knife is fairly dull from the factory on wood material. It just It's just kind of scratching the surface. So this knife is Oopsie very dull from the factory. I just missed the bench behind me uh, So it's very dull from the factory. It's not a big deal. It's a D2 tool steel, which is a mature steel uh, You should be able to sharpen this guy out on the like a Spyderco sharp maker or stones and get it to a fairly serviceable or a good edge. Um, so I'll figure that out and I'll put in the description uh, if I figure out if it's like a 15 or 20, whatever works.
last little bit is just going to be a size comparison. It is quite a little knife. So there's the Kershaw leak if you're a Kershaw fan and there's a Spider Codelica. Uh, so these knives are all in the same price range. They're all about a hundred dollars Canadian. And then there's the Manly Gent. So these knives are all about a hundred dollars and they're all about the same size. Uh, I'm not going to do any other opinions beyond that. Just that's the size of it. I'll wait for a month before I start, uh, pretending I know anything about this knife because it might fall apart on me or it might just be an absolute golden keeper knife. So there we are. So that's the uh, quick unboxing and teardown of my knife. Uh, it runs very well. Like I've had a couple Kershaws. I sold them all and I've only kept my leak. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the best Kershaw I've had. Um, so far, like again, just a few minutes with it, but uh, centering's on, easy to get uh, get it apart, get it back together, and it runs very well. It just it flicks very well. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes over the next month. Uh, and again, I'm just looking forward to seeing how the copper will patina over time, and uh, to see if I can get this to actually cut something. Thanks for your time.